subscribe or this will happen to you. <laughs> yeah, you're not subscribed yet? Come on! Right guys, this is the morning before the Royal Albert Hall Giants Live Strongman Classic. Unfortunately, um, Giants have said there's no transportation to the show, so Tom and I have got our pumped out rides. I thought it was electric, that's why I got it. <laughs> electric bikes, what up? We're in London, so we've got to cycle uh, two hours to the show. But for warm up, so Tom and I are going to get on and see what we can get up to on our bikes. Cutting about London. Beep, 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 beep. I sign up to be an Uber driver for the day. The Uber on the bikes. You can deliver Ubers. I'll be a well good Uber one. Socks and sandals. <laughs> <laughs> We are just about to leave the hotel, do it by Gav. We're about to jump in some taxis to go down to the Royal Albert Hall. Unfortunately, Simon is not allowed to be there, so I'll have to sneak the camera in and I'll be doing the filming, so apologies for the rest of the video, because it's going to be pretty rubbish, but we'll try and get some footage. I think the Royal Albert Hall is like a mile away from us, so pretty easy, pretty chilled. Let's go and break the world record. Axel, press. This is awesome. How cool is this, man? Gee. Right close. Wow. What? Big balloons in that up there. Let's go! Let's go! Echo, go, go! I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> oh my god, it's Santa. Santa's here! Tom, you want to interview Santa? I don't like, I'm scared of Santa, is it? It's my knee here. So, uh, Mr. Claus, what, what are you doing in the Albert Hall? Is it not a bit warm for you? I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> we're all joking. It's Mr. Paul Dwyer. The leprechaun. Hey guys, how are you keeping? How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Excited to be in Manchester. What, what size is your vest? Medium? It's hot tuna. Hot tuna. <laughs> Let me show you a fun way. <laughs> to eat tuna. Show us. Do you eat fish? Oh, you're going to beat this guy? Yeah. Easy. At Stones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to beat you 500 quid if he beats me at Stones. Let's just see his zoom back. Let's see his both next to each other. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> There's a, a man's foot there and some girls with scars on her shins. Oh, no, Santa. Just walking up the steps to the royal boxes. It's Tom's seat, the naughty boy seat. Wow, this is cool. Right, guys, here we are. Just before we go on to the Royal Albert Hall main stage, been up there, looks incredible. We're in the warm up area, so we're all warming up to snow. It's pretty hot and humid in here at the moment, but uh, as you can see, Pa has got the amazing grit shirt. So, it's supposed to stick, but yeah, it's quite nice. So many abs on there. Yeah, Pa's. I got 14 abs. He's got a 14 pack. 14 pack. Start here. Makes the way down to trapezoruses into the Billy Bensies. You don't have them. You just have squidgy stuff that shakes when he walks. That's why I'm the strongest man in the world. That's Tom. Try it out. <laughs> 
Santa. Santa's here. Oh, your warm ups, Mike? Feels light, should feel light, so. But me, it's hot. You alright, Lars? How are you? I'm good, buddy. How are you doing? Yeah, good. What are your predictions today, mate? Oh, <laughs> to have a lot of fun. I think it's going to be a great show. Uh, real hard to predict the winner, I think, with the events yeah. and the guys competing. But I think we're all going to enjoy it. Just is being this your first um, competition back, is it? Yeah, yeah. first and last. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think it's going to be awesome, I think. You know, Tom's got a great chance, Novikov. But there's a whole host of, of awesome athletes. I think just more than anything, this show is about having fun. You know, being in front of a crowd again is going to be really cool. Um, what do you think of the venue as well? It's, it's amazing. Yeah. I mean, I haven't been out in front of the, the crowd yet, but just even stood out there with no one, it was incredible. So I'm excited to get out there and, you know, soak up that atmosphere and hopefully it helps us all lift a little bit more weight. Smash it. Yeah, if Bibby can clean it to his chest, or shoulders, then he'll be able to press for a world record for sure. Um, that's, I guess, never in doubt if Bibby can press it, it's more if he can clean it. Hopefully he can. Um, I think he's kind of suffering from a little bit of a tweak in his bicep, he was saying, but hopefully that won't hinder him too much. We want him to do it, you know, it's... He is, he's awesome, Bibby. Um, so, let's hope he can do it. And, yeah, some of us other guys can kind of put in a good show. Tendon's a little bit sore at the moment, it's, um, but yeah, I'll just do what I can do, that's all I can do. I'm here, here to have fun and for the party. So you can hear my throat is still a little bit scratchy um, from the weekend. Just got back from Royal Albert Hall Giants live, um, awesome show. Unfortunately, um, we weren't allowed to film um, at the show, so that's why we haven't shown many clips um, off the events and stuff. So we'll keep it kind of, we'll let you know how we got on, but watch it at Christmas time, because it's better when you watch it live. So, um, the Albert Hall, preparation wise, you guys would have seen how Tom and I were feeling after Worlds, came in with a few injuries, my tendon's not been right since Worlds. So my plan was to go and try the axle and then kind of bow out and, you know, that would be me, the sensible thing to do. We got out and our intro, we got kind of laid out and then we went down through the crowd and the crowd were just amazing. <laughs> yeah, the Royal Albert Hall was great. The thing that made it more special was it was the first time in 18 months that there was a crowd in a strongman competition. Um, so that's long for any athlete, any fan. You know, a lot of frustration through this time as well, but it was nice to have 5,000 plus people there at the competition. So, yeah, I went down there. I think everybody knew that I was just going down to have some fun. You know, I wasn't 100%, never was going to be 100% coming back off a win of World Straws Man and then obviously doing all the media, all the TV stuff, interviews, uh, everything, you know, I had about a week's worth of training, so, and a hamstring is still like 60, 70%. But anyway, let's go to the kind of walkout. So every athlete was getting called out. Um, I got called out last. I heard when Luke got his roar, I was like, wow, these guys are loud. So, and I missed that. And then when I got called out, 
for me, looking at myself was the loudest. It blew my mind hearing that many people and goosebumps and then just, I got a massive buzz from that and yeah, the crowd was just unbelievable. The noise they made, were in, it was insane. Loud, loud, loud. I mean, everybody there says it was loud. Probably felt one of the loudest I've been to, you know, I've been to a lot of Giants live competitions, but the arenas have been bigger. But because this was like a smaller arena and everybody was so enclosed, it felt like I was at a 50,000k football match. I've been to a lot of football matches. So yeah, Royal Albert Hall, right from the start, the walk-up was sensational. Like buzzing, the adrenaline was going. I was like, oh no, I'm going to have to do the whole show now. Basically I did. So I, I competed, I did every event. That was pretty cool. So first event was the Max Axel. I hadn't been able to train any push press or any axle cleans for probably a couple of weeks now just with my tendon being, being so sore so I was worried I didn't even think I was going to make the opening lift thankfully I did yeah! A few people failed it so that got me some good points Get to see Big Iron Bibby break the world record as well that was pretty awesome Aaron Bibby, you're the man, smashed it mate, really proud of you. And yeah, really, really quite happy with how I, how I did it, so I think I finished, I don't know, top four in that for the, the Max Axel press. We had Iron Bibby over here to kind of go for the 216 kilogram Axel press world record, which he smashed on the third attempt, as you guys can see from the Giants Live kind of feed and the Facebook pages, etc. I went out in this event and like I said, just had fun. That's all I was doing at this event was having fun. There was no pressure on me whatsoever. I already kind of proved I was the best in the world. So um, I went out there, hit a nice, well, hit a kind of nervous ropey 170. You know, I was getting the nerves off me and I was just trying to get the feel for the bar, feel for the crowd and everything. Got past the first lift, then it was a big one, the 190. I knew a lot of people were going to drop out in this lift, so I needed to hit 190 to kind of be in about of it and, uh, you know, get decent points. And, you know, 190, cleaned it, cleaned it quite easy. Then the press threw up, which was... You know, for me, a good feeling, you know, pressing and training 190 was always a hit a miss. So to hit it first time and to hit it comfy was a great feeling. The crowd again went mental, they erupted and uh, yeah, it was then on to the 205, which you know, I never had, I never had done 205 kilograms in my life. So I was just going out to kind of, again, I just attempted it, cleaned it. I cleaned it, you know, fairly comfortable to my chest and then I pressed it like halfway up. So. I knew it was there. I just left it after the first attempt. You know, I didn't want to go up, back up and do two, three, four attempts. At it. You know, my hamstring again, like I said, that was the thing that was in my head at that event. And just having fun. So, you know, I stopped at 190, a big lift for myself. A few other I think two other guys got 190. And then, obviously, Iron Bibby won it with the world record. So, for me in that first event, I felt like good. It was nice to get a feel for the stadium again. It was nice to get a feel of the crowd again. And it was just nice to be back competing in the kind of indoor arenas. I know lots will be really disappointed if you didn't get the 170 because he is good for that. But I'm really glad he stopped when he did and didn't try again because he's either going to get hurt or he's going to take a lot more out of himself. And I just don't think it was worth it considering how many other people have missed it. So guys, event two was Hercules hold. This one was a kind of hit and miss. I thought I would do a wee bit better because I've been training Hercules at home, but maybe it's just because of all the kind of travel and, you know, my head wasn't in it as much as it would be if I was going for the win. You know, I still got, I think it was 38, 39 seconds, which is again, an improvement on the last Hercules hold. So hopefully the next time I do it, it'll be 40 seconds plus. You know, everyone's getting better at Hercules hold, but I think maybe just because I wasn't kind of physically and mentally kind of prepped for it and, didn't feel like I wanted to go all out in that event. My grip kind of just slipped again, but at the end of the day, you know, 38 seconds for me is a massive improvement than it has been forever. And I think training Hercules hold at home and getting used to that pain is, is working. You know, I was kind of in pain with that and I kind of squeezed as, high as hard as I could, but it was just my left hand that gave way. Maybe have to change the grip on the Hercules we've got here, because for some reason the grip on the Giants Live feels a bit different. Maybe my setup on the Giants Live one isn't right when I'm doing it. I'd, 
training here. Change it. But yeah, I'm going to go down and practice that at Sadler's the next time. It's an unimportant comp to me. But like I said, it was just nice and fun to actually be able to get more than 30 seconds on a Hurtley's hold. When I'm holding it, it just really, I can feel the tendon shaking. It's a weird thing. I thought I might make it feel a little bit better. I just thought if I stretch it out, it might feel nice. It was pretty sore for the last 15 seconds. I think I was pretty shaky from about 20 seconds in. I think I got 47 seconds or so, which is probably one of the best times I've done on Hercules Hold for a while. Again, I think Iron Bibby smashed that. Evan smashed it as well. Some good events for them. The crowd were amazing. You know, they were cheering. They were just... I can't explain the atmosphere there. So, yeah, Hercules Hold was fine. Job done. Obviously, we had the, the great legend that is Mark Felix. So he was actually going for a a record there, but I think Mark had a slight injury um, coming into the competition, so um, unfortunately Mark didn't get the world record on the Hercules hold this time. He still holds the world record, he's the man at Hercules hold. Yeah, unfortunately this time, due to an injury, I think Mark just wasn't performing um, at his best, so uh, it didn't happen from this time. I'm sure the next time Hercules hold, he'll have another go and smash the world record. Event number three was the deadlift for reps, I believe it was uh, 360 kilo axle for reps. I was starting to feel it a little bit by this point, so I just thought I'd just go for one one rep and then that would be me, I'm just gonna call it. Um, so I did one rep, easy enough. I just didn't want to not do any reps for it. So I was yeah, happy enough, that was the plan. Went in, did a rep, call it that. And it was quite good because I was up against Tom as well. And by this time, I think Tom Tom's hamstring was really giving him some grief. So um, I think he was trying to yeah, use all back and no legs or hammies or glutes to, to lift it. So it was a bit of a bit of a tough one, um, the deadlift for us. But again, the crowd were awesome. They, I think they really appreciated that Tom and I were, were kind of struggling and really got behind us. So it was awesome. But next time, we'll get a few more reps in the deadlift. So yeah, by the time um, this event came around, the deadlift, I might have had a couple of pints um, to try and numb the pain a little bit. Cheers, guys. Are you still doing yeah? Yeah, I'm, yeah, of course I've been, like, been on it all day. I'm blazing. I'm so drunk, that's why I keep taking my shirts off. This is what I do. You haven't done that. All right, ladies and gentlemen. 360k for reps. This is cool because it was me versus Luke on this event. And uh, this is the one I was most worried about. I've not hit over 300k in training on an axle deadlift or a normal deadlift since I've been home from Worlds. I've been really struggling with deadlifts through the hamstring injury. Just not wanting to push, you know. Um, First two weeks coming back from Worlds, I didn't train no lower body uh, at all. I couldn't even bend over to hardly put my socks on. Been trying to get as much work as I can on it. But as I, you know, I, I, t I said to do Royal Albert Hall because it was the first one back and I wanted it to be part of the historic event. So when it was 360, this is when I was scared. You know, usually I never really struggle with deadlifts, but three reps on the deadlift felt like hell. Every rep, you know, I had to change my stance and I had to change the way I pull, which again, I wasn't comfortable with. But like I said, it is what it is. I didn't want to push. I didn't want to try the other rep in case my hamstring pulled off. But, you know, for me, three reps is fine considering I'm not actually trained a deadlift. I got, like I said, one deadlift session, maybe the whole prep. So, yeah, three reps, 360. Very happy with that. And uh, the good thing is I didn't, I didn't come away from that event worse than I did uh, at World Strawers, man. So that was a good thing. My hamstring was still sore. It didn't make it any worse. Event four is frame carry. For me, frame carry should never be done with straps. Doesn't matter if you're going for a world record or not. Frame carry should be for grip. And at World Strawers, man, you know, it didn't have any straps and was fine. And I'm crap at putting straps on frames for some reason. I can't. I find frame harder with straps than I do without. You know, in my eyes, I should have done it without straps, but it's just a learning curve. Hopefully, they take the straps away next time and we can do a, you know, a a, a strapless frame. Again, I struggled with that event big time. And when I picked up, I felt every step, I felt it on my hamstring. I couldn't accelerate fast either, you know. It was it was painful. That was very painful, that event. Um, I think just carrying 400K in my hands and, you know, 180 kilogram body weight, every step on my right side was was hurting. Last time I did the frame carry, um, kind of messed up a little bit, I had my hands, I think, too far back. So the, the frame dug into the ground and it was kind of dragging along. Um, so this time I kind of staggered my grip, listened to what the guys were saying that had used it before and put in a really good time actually. It was, I think I got 10 seconds, which is, you know, a, a vast improvement. Uh, to be honest, I think I could go faster still. I was quite shocked at how, how kind of easy it was. Um, plus, I think I had about three pints by this time, so I was starting to, to sway a little bit. So next time I get to do it, you know, really confident I can put in a good time and, and 
uh, hopefully even challenge for that world record. I don't think it's out of my grasp, so that'd be pretty cool. Unfortunately, the world record didn't go. I think Alexi smashed it. He was very close to it. It was like 0.2 of a second off. And same as Bish. Bish smashed it as well, but unfortunately no world record. By event five, I was getting there at about, I think, five or six pints. By the way, I don't recommend anyone drinks before competing in a Giants Live or any other strongman show. I just had it in my head I was going to do one event, like I said, and then go up into the crowd and have a few beers. But I decided to carry on. Event five was at Atlas Stones, yeah, and by this point I had about six pints. Um, I was feeling quite good, I was dancing a little bit, enjoying myself. Tendon was, uh, yeah, it was getting numb, put it that way, so it wasn't too bad. I was up against uh, Big Laws, which was a, a great honour. Laws was saying that's his last show that he's going to be doing, so um, for me to have the honour of going up against Lawrence on his last ever event in Strongman was quite a, a special moment for me. Um, the Stones went really well this time for me. It was I was still a bit nipped at World's Strongest Man, the Stone performance there. I didn't really give a good account of myself. Um, this time, smashed all the Stones. Quite, it wasn't the fastest run I've done, but it was, it was reasonable, like 22 seconds. But I noticed I was starting to kind of lift them a little bit squint, which maybe had something to do with the pints. So it's one of those things. Maybe don't drink beer before I do Stones. I don't know. One of the best atmospheres I've experienced at a Giants Live show for a long, long time. Um, credit to the Giants Live team, run so smoothly, and having it in such, like, a place like the Royal Albert Hall, it's, it's such an iconic place for us, especially in the UK. You know, we know what it means. We know the performers that have been there before. So for us to be there was pretty incredible, and um, I loved every minute of it. Um, it was pretty special for me to be there. I remember competing in car parks when I first started. So we went from car parks to the Royal Albert Hall. Um, it's been quite a journey. Um, and it's just the start, I think, of the strongman scene in the UK. I really see a big, big rise in the next couple of years and it'll just keep growing and growing and growing. And I certainly hope that Tom and myself are going to be a massive part of that growth in the UK. I wanted to go out with a fast time. Um, I knew I was never going to break the world record. There was no way in my mind that I was prepping for that. Um, I said, again, I didn't touch stones to Wall Street's man, so I was a bit scared. One with the hamstring, two with the heights of the giant live uh, platforms. I knew I was the best stone lifter there, so I kind of just went in, did what the best I could. The thing that kind of got me was that the one at the end, the 180 nearly slipped out my hand. That's because when I came up to extend my uh, top half of the lift, I just felt it all in my hamstring. So I kind of like caught the ball let it go a bit and caught it again and I just felt the pain going through my hammy there so I thought after that event that, that my hamstring was done that I would be out for a while and you know went to a competition too quickly after World's Strongest Man and I got a 16 second time or 16.8 whatever so it was you know really fast still which I was really pleased out about uh, that I don't need to train stones I can still be good at it and I can still be good injured so yeah overall the for the competition was a very big success, you know, Colin and Darren put on another great show with the Giants Live team. Um, and yeah, my performance was good, you know, fifth place coming on the back of World's Strongest Man. With, you know, like I said, no prep, nothing. It's just, uh, like I said this year, the competitions that I pick to do good on are the ones that I'll do good on. The other ones I'll just be having fun with, you know, going down, not training for and keeping my body fresh for the most important ones. So Royal Albert Hall was a massive success. Stones wasn't so bad for a half drunk guy, was it? That's the end of the Strongman Classic Royal Albert Hall. One of the most amazing shows I've ever done. Not really my performance wise, but just with the crowd. Such a welcoming they gave us, man. It was like, I can't even explain how good it was. It was spine tingling every time I stepped out there on stage. So good, so good. I was going to pull out after the first event. I didn't. And here we are. Sweaty, sticky, smelly and the first comp of the year, or sorry, the first Giants Live comp of the year done.
Are you all the drunk as well? Or? I've had, a, I'm not gonna lie, I've had about six pints, so I'm happy. Worsen this man, and of course, it's the first my victory. I'm very happy. I'm glad that I didn't break the world record, but I know that I'm wrong, I can do even better in the next tournament. So, further, further, better, 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 better. Right guys, that was fun. First time ever in the Royal Albert Hall in front of all these three guys. I finished fifth place, which is, uh, I'm very happy with that, you know. I've had any trains. My hamstring went again on a uh, deadlift. As you can see on the stones, a 180 slip, but it's still fast. I'm still happy with how I performed. Happy to be here. Happy to have Strongman back. And uh, what a show it was, you know. Cheers, guys. Thanks, spicy. How was it, mate? All right. Yeah, it was great, brother. You know, get back out there. It was enjoyable. I enjoyed it. You know, you're gonna have to bleep that out. If I say hello to curse words, you're gonna have to do extra work, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> How are you, Laws? You good? I'm good, mate. Did you have fun today? Oh, it was amazing. Just, what, a, what an incredible day. I am absolutely shattered now. <laughs> so guys, that was our recap videos for Giants Live, Royal Albert Hall. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the whole event as a whole, if you've watched it live stream, if you were there. Um, and yeah, we had fun. That was the most important part, just back from Welsh Road. Man, seeing so many faces there after a long, long 18 months in this pandemic. So guys, enjoy the video, like, comment, subscribe, stay safe, smile and stay spicy. And don't forget to ring that little bell. Ding, 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 ding.